Hey guys, Dr. Kahu here, welcome back to my channel. Now today I'm going to be doing a continuation to the what have I created and that is what if GT Goku got sent to the past, part 5. Now as usual guys, if you guys can please like and subscribe, leave a comment down below, leave the bell notification on so you guys can be the first to get my new content and of course guys, keep keep supporting, you guys, it's cool that you guys are watching my videos and leaving comments and I know that is to let you guys know I kind of lost my voice in a sense, yeah, long story, but uh, I hope you guys understand and I hope my... I can do videos better next time. So yeah, without further ado guys, let's get into this next part of this what if, and that is, what if GT Goku got sent to the past, part 5. Now let's begin. I'll do a brief recap of what happened previously and then jump straight back into this new part, okay guys? So what we left off previously, Goku was easily dismantling anyone he come across and when Toppo and Hit rushed at Goku, Goku at the last moment focused his energy and expanded enough for Super Saiyan Blue to emerge. Toppo and Hit got, got sent flying from Goku's key pressure itself and Jiren goes to confront Goku. And as both Goku and Jiren are staring at down each other, this is where we're going to continue from my episode, guys. So let us begin. The atmosphere is thick. Balmont is, is panicking. He doesn't know if Jiren can actually take Goku. He's actually quite afraid. Barris herself and Whis are looking down um, quite silent. Normally Barris is cheerful, but you know this is going to be Goku's most intense fight possibly he ever had. And so as, as Barris looks on, he goes, Give him hell, Goku! Goku looks at Beerus, takes it, takes it, and looks right at Jiren. Vegeta's looking on. Everyone kind of stops fighting from Universe 7 because they can feel Jiren's pressure. And as Goku and Jiren stare at each other, Jiren begins to emit some energy, and so does Goku. As Jiren powers up, so I'm flexing his key, Goku does the same. What happens is both of the um, power-ups pretty much shakes the entire arena. A lot of people actually um, get forced out because of this. Like the little bug man gets pushed out by the debris sent his way. And the invisible um, lizard guy. And so, as even weaker fighters in Universe 7, like Master Roshi, they, they said that because the, the, the key pressure from Goku and Jiren is so powerful, you know? So powerful, in fact. And as Goku, Goku and Jiren look on, Goku goes, he goes, whenever you're ready, big guy. Jiren goes, <laughs> throws a punch at Goku, and Goku watches it, it catches the punch. And as Goku catches the punch, he moves back. He takes one step back and he and leans into the punch and realizes that Jiren has a lot of power, a lot of strength. Goku can't just play with this. That's right. Goku merely deflects the arm up, comes up, and instead of relying on his, his, his power boost, right now he begins to fight Jiren in the sense of gauging him without trying to take damage. And to everyone's surprise, Goku, when, he, when he's fighting with Jim Jiren, he's actually gauging all his movements. Goku realizes after the, th the first three or four punches he dodges of Jiren's that immediately what he, what he knows what kind of fighter Jiren is Goku jumps down, Jiren throws the punch again and then Goku catches the punch and he gets pushed back Jiren rushes at Goku Goku immediately sees this, he focuses ignites, he ignites himself into Super Saiyan Blue and both Jiren begin to rush and fight each other the moment they begin to fight each other what happens is the stadium begins to break like thunder Jiren's actually have, having to put out more energy than he would normally do at this present time Vegeta can't believe just the, the difference in power. Kale and um, Kefla understand that there's a massive difference in power. What can they do? What can they do? And so as, as, as they're looking on, um, this is when Kale and Kefla realize that, uh, Kale and Khalifa realize that maybe the best time to do it is now. They put the Portari earrings on and they fuse into um, Kefla. When by the time they fight them, because they, these two are the most powerful on, on the, the stage, you can feel so. But you can't feel um, Vegeta's energy. Because of God carrying the pressure. And so as, as they fuse, Vegeta senses someone strong as well. He turns back, Kale rushes at Vegeta, sends a massive kick. Brad is able to catch it and flip the leg and throw it away. And as, as Vegeta rushes at Kale, oh, I'm sorry, Kale, Kefla, it's just made very apparent that she's just toying with them, both Raditz and, and Vegeta. And not only that, thanks to Jiren and Goku's fight sparking off so fast. What happens is um, Ani Raza appears much more earlier because because of the resulting shockwave of both Goku and Jiren's fight, it's actually blowing everyone away, throwing people out of the arena, even from their own team. You know, Trunks 
got pushed out. Masaroshi Colin, they all got they all got thrown out of the arena. Even Andrew eighteen, thanks to both, both Goku and Jiren's fight. A lot of people got thrown out immediately, you know. All this lifters universe uh, and Piccolo got chucked out. All this lifters Vegeta, Goku, um what's it called? Gohan. Yeah, I think yeah. And Raditz. They, those are the only four left in the arena. And Freezer. So Freezer's still in there. And seventeen. My bad. So everyone's in a really bad predicament, bad predicament. We wish we were lost other universes. That all the gods are like pondering, would the stadium survive this? Yeah, would the stadium or the arena itself um, be able to um, continue this fight? Knowing that Goku has more power to give, does Jiren? And as Goku and Jiren begins to screw off um, in, in a massive heated um, crash, they're sending lightning everywhere. Like, it's crazy. Goku and Jiren are just, their power up is is getting getting to the point where it's becoming really dangerous for everyone. But Jiren himself is having an intense battle. And so is Raditz because Kao decided to go to Super Saiyan. So that they're having a very, very tough battle. And not only that, Anirazza is trying to get into the fight with Goku and Jiren. But Goku and Jiren are just way too fast that he can't even anticipate it. But Anirazza begins to fight Gohan. Gohan stands there with 17. And Frieza trying to square off against him. Well, the top is still there, so he, he goes to end this way. Then he goes to help. There's all that's left in the universe, and the Namekians and Kefla. And so, even the Namekians go to help, you know, because they have practically unlimited energy and healing. Anirazza becomes a massive threat. And the red at sand, Vegeta are fighting um, Kefla. Yeah, it's, it's good destruction, a distraction. And so, Gohan being way more powerful than he is in canon, even just having ultimate form Gohan is really, really, really strong. Um, they're able to utilize the abilities to hold off Anirazza's attacks, and then they go on to able to sense and duck and dodge all the, all of the attacks, um, practicing, you know, just observing. And the Mechians provide distraction, so does um, what's it called, um, Seventeen. Frieza himself doesn't care to play games, but he understands the deal he made with Goku, so he, he, he helps reluctantly. But what happens is Seventeen finds out the weakness of Anirazza's massive jewel on his head. And so all, he tells everyone, all of them back together, all of them power up fully and shoot, do their most powerful attacks. And he runs a fight it, and then 17 jumps right through the barrier. He rushes in, destroys Ani Raza's head, cracking it completely. And what ends up going down is um, Ani Raza is, gets taken out by the entire key, key blast from everyone. He gets taken out of the arena, all of them split apart, the universe is gone. And so the only universes that technically left are Universe 6, Universe 7. In Universe 11, three fighters from Universe 11: Jiren, Topo, and Dispo. Um, four fighters from Universe 6: Hit, um, what's her name, Kefla, and the two Super Namekians, and a few from Universe 7: Goku, Vegeta, Raditz, Gohan, and Frieza. At 17, quite a bit to be honest. And so, and as they proceed, this is when <coughs> Topo immediately. Asus's authority, Hit wasn't there. Part of it, he was still trying to recover from Goku's attack. And so when Hit comes into battle, he actually comes into attack. Um, top, um, top, being the next most powerful of the group. And what happens? None of them, none of them even carrying to fight Vegeta and um, and, and Raditz and Kefla. Nah, none of them care. Everyone wants to stay away from Jiren's fight and Goku's fight. They want to watch at the same time. Everyone just needs to do what they do. But this is when they all realise though that the fight is still getting out of hand and it's better to try and survive the attacks or to try to survive the echoes of Jiren's and Goku's fight rather than fighting and getting taken out by one of those random lightning bolts or energy thrown everywhere. And so all of them look at each other and they all disperse in their own individual area. Universe Serial and clearly having more of the most strongest fighters alive. Well, the spell and um, Topo talk about a strategy as they watch Dispo reckons that Jiren's got this, but Topo, Topo looks at Dispo and, and, and kind of shrugs his shoulders. He states he doesn't truly know if, if he has it. In fact, he believes no, no one in this tournament has Goku's power. Dispo then believe that he believes that he's just trying to scare him. But Topo goes, no, this isn't a joke. All the world's destruction fear his power. They see how powerful he truly is. And so, what well, goes down is Vegeta and Cam, um, 
Kefla's fight with Anne Redis. Starting to heat up until she goes full power Super Saiyan. She easily overpowers both of them. Overpowers them both dramatically. It gets to the point where both Vegeta and Raditz are getting desperate and having to resort to their own form of limit breaker. Vegeta forcefully explode himself to Super Saiyan Blue Evolution. And Raditz us utilizing Goku's technique of Cat or Kaioken Blue. Which surprises Goku, but hey, Raditz, Raditz learnt from his brother the most, you know? And so Raditz and Vegeta both utilize their limit breaker attacks and they rush in to fight um, Kefla and they actually start to push the fight. In their favour, she gets overwhelmed by these two trapped powering up into this state until she has no choice but to explode the Super Saiyan 2. And she explodes the Super Saiyan 2. Vegeta Raditz are not confident they're going to win. However, <coughs> they're going to give everything sh everything uh, they can to beat her. And so both of them power up and they think about their families, think about everything they have. And what happens is they proceed to fight and they know that they can get stronger. They know they can. But they have to push themselves you know and this is when uh, Raditz states that maybe we can and they look at um, they look at each other Vegeta and Raditz they what and what do you mean Raditz states well Kakarot taught me how to go Super Saiyan 4 and, Rad and Vegeta goes well I've seen it happen seen it happen too what's your point we don't have Raditz opens his hands up he generates a massive key blast to push it away he opens his hands up and chucks the mini moon in the air and doing so he's gonna force the transformation now he's unsure if this will affect Goku's fight, but he knows that he's only going to keep it so they can transform at least. And so what happens is, as he does so, Vegeta's like, I hope you know what you're doing there, Raditz. Um, the mini moon appears and both Vegeta and Raditz transform into, his, um, into a giant ape. But this this kind of throws Goku off, because Goku, Goku doesn't want to see the little moon because he'll, he'll transform as well. And that's, what, that's not what he wants. And so, as Goku looks around, tries to dodge the light rays and everything like that, Jiren starts to capitalize on Goku's um, destructive um, tendencies because Goku's trying to dodge all of these, um, well, these inhibitors that, that will affect him, you know, especially in this fight. And in doing so, Jiren starts to land some some mighty hits on Goku. Even Beerus sees this, and we underst he instantly understands what Goku's trying to do. But we, Beerus is like, "What the hell are Vegeta and Raditz up to?" And transforming into giant apes. Um, at first, they're about to rampage, but Vegeta goes, I'm no damn Lord Class Saiyan. He instantly starts to focus, his, his ape form goes gold, and, and he goes, This is not enough. He focuses, like you can see, he uses anger, he uses his will, and he focuses what's most important to him is his family. He remembers seeing that through Goku's mind, the fact that Earth was his home, and he focused on that, and when he transformed, and he saw Pan, and Pan centered him in the GT timeline, and he turned the Super Saiyan 4. That's the same way Vegeta gets him um, over, he goes, I'm no weakling, I have something to live for. And as Vegeta begins to power up and compress his energy, he turns straight into Super Saiyan 4. And as Vegeta does so, he goes, ha, I definitely beat my, uh, my other half. <laughs> and he's referring to the GT half, the one that couldn't transform without the blood sweep. And as Vegeta stands there, he looks right at Raditz, Raditz at first finds it a little bit difficult to do, do so, but he turns from having knowing that he has a family too, and I'd like to get back to, and the idea that he needs his family to survive, and so he instantly turns into Super Saiyan um, um, 4 as well. Both Raditz and Vegeta stand there, but this moment Vegeta goes, he focuses, he focuses deeply. He knows that going to Super Saiyan is not just the um, mental, it's but the, the, the key exertion itself. And as Vegeta focuses, he finally reaches the stage where he goes Super Saiyan Blue. Raditz almost gets there, but um, his Super Saiyan 4 state takes a more of a Super Saiyan God. And so his, his, his form goes into a more red gold, red gold, while Vegeta turns blue. Energy, and as Raditz looks over, Vegeta kind of smiles. Raditz understands that, like, he understands the difference between him and Vegeta. But he's not going to be, um, let that hold him back there, he'll eventually get there. But him being Super Saiyan 4, Super Saiyan God, and Vegeta being Super Saiyan 4 Blue, yep, it was enough for both of them to be able to handle Super Saiyan 2 um, Kefla. She was wondering what was what the hell happened and what, what was going on with the moon, and why they turned into stupid monkeys. Go on kind of sweated because the moment he felt the moon, he turned away. But the moon's destroyed by now, it got destroyed by now. And as Vegeta and Raditz with the fight um, Kefla, this is when Hit realizes that, um, what's it called? 
that Kev um, is going to lose to him. And so he disengages his, co his confrontation with Topo. And then when he disappears as fast as he can to go help Kefla. And knowing that, so does the two Namekians. And as, as they get away, Gohan rushes after them. But Gohan's confronted by Dispo. And Freezer is 2 versus 17. And Topo lands too. And Topo powers up right immediately right, and tells them that because of his universe will end this mess. Because of your damn father. Gohan hears this and gets angry and his power, he powers up. Topo goes, with that kind of mediocre power, what makes you think you'll beat me? Topo explodes into 100%. And Freezer goes, Freezer goes, I wouldn't rely on the weak power that you just have right now. Speaking to the fact that, boom, Freezer goes straight into his golden form. We have far surpassed that power. Go and ignites his energy even more and pushes his ultimate form to heights that not even any of them seen before. As Go and stands here and walks out with his, his energy, is really, really powerful. And both Freezer and, and, and Go and stand side by side. And they rush at, and rush at Topo. And what happens is, as they get close, Dispo runs past to try to blindside him, but he manages to get Freezer. But Gohan's able to see it and he kicks um, Dispo right in the head. Sends Dispo flying, crashing. And as Dispo lands, he's about to get up at 17, puts a barrier around him immediately, throws him up in the air, and tells him, Your, your, your time in this fight's over. And the 17 kicks the, the barrier out. Dispo uses the super speed to crack the, the, the shield. And as it breaks open, he moves so fast that he jumps off the, sh the shield barrier, lands back in the arena. And moves for like moves his like his light speed. He, he, he speed blitzes it, rushes right at seventeen, starts to punch him, punch him like a tornado. Bear in mind, as all of this is going down, Goku and Jiren are just still going full ball. Jiren was capitalized until the, the little moon was the little moon disappears. But what happened is Jiren still before Goku um, fully recovers, um, back into a straight state. Um, Jiren catches um, Goku's uh, fist, swings him around and punches him so hard, puts a massive keyboard in his, in, in his, his hand. And he releases it, and as Goku hits the ground, the explosion is massive. Jiren goes, Thank you for the fight, but I believe now this is over. And as um, nothing left, it's just a massive waking debris. Everyone's shocked, but Goku, Goku gets out of the ground and tells him, Was that it? Was that all you technically got? Jiren looks at Goku, only Goku's clothes were singed, he walks right over, and he goes, I must say, I'm a little bit disappointed if that's all you got. Goku explodes with Super Saiyan Blue. Yeah, again, Jiren looks at Goku and Goku. Any form of wound that Goku did have is instantly gone. Because Goku knows how to recover. He knows how to utilize his healing techniques thanks to mastering his abilities. And so Goku looks right at Jiren and tells him, well, no time for the present then. Goku immediately speed bounces Jiren and he appears right behind Jiren. Jiren turns around, but he gets caught by two punches that he didn't see. And Jiren gets hit back, he lands on the ground, looks up, Goku's already next to him, punching him right in the face. And as Jiren gets sent back, even more he starts to recover, every time he recovers, Goku's landing a punch here, a punch there, a punch there, a kick there. Goku starts to realise, okay, you want to capitalise when I'm distracted? Alright then. Goku begins to uh, over, overpower Jiren really fast. He moves really fast to the point of like a speed, uh, like a massive blur. Until he lands one massive critical punch that Jiren doesn't count on. Goku punches him in between, between his eyes. In doing so, Goku puts it, opens up a key blast right in his face and sh shoots him straight into the into the um, arena. As he hits the arena um, floor, the entire arena blows up, cracking the entire stage in half. Goku lands, he looks for Jiren. Jiren's um, hanging off, um, off the side of a massive block. He jumps up and looks at Goku. He's got a bruise on his head, like he realized that Goku was not joking with how much power he's going to be putting in. And so, as they both stare at each other, like, in a real intense way, both Goku, Goku and Jiren. Jiren realizes that Goku is actually more powerful than he expected. In fact, Jiren's actually taken it back and he's kind of nervous to fight Goku now. Goku looks at Jiren, he goes, I hope that, I hope you got more. So right now I'm starting to warm up. I'm starting to warm up. When Batman hears this, he tries to pass this off as a fake, from a bravado, as something fake. But Beerus looks like um, um, Batman and tells him he's not lying. I've trained with this man for three years. He's more powerful than what he looks like. And so, as the universe of Eleven got into destruction, Belmont and God of Creation look on. They're actually scared of Goku. Now even more. Goku's standing there, and what happens is an explosion happens behind Goku. Goku turns around. Super Saiyan God Four, Raditz is on the ground. He's fallen into his base form. All that's left the Super Saiyan Four, Blue Vegeta, and and my Raditz is like Kakarot. 
and then he like goes, tells him I can't go on. And then Reddit's is really tired. I've given everything I have, but this girl, she's on round 18. The battle just continues, continues. And Reddit goes, puts his hand on his brother's head and goes, huh? I can spend you a second. The girl gets right at um, right over me, appears right in front of Kefla, kicks her right in the gut. In a super sad blue state, it does say Kefla hits the ground so hard, grabbing her gut, trying to breathe. That Vegeta's like, Kakarot, what the hell? Goku jumps away immediately. And doing so, hits and, and the two Namekians arrive. And this is when Vegeta sees hit and kills him. He's got a bone to settle with him. And so, what happens is Vegeta stands there and he rushes at um, hit and begin to fight away. Um, Kale's uh, Kefla still on the ground trying to recover from um, Goku's, well, Goku's brutal kick. The two Namekians are begin to attack and but begin to be on the offensive but Raditz is really 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 fast and his double Sunday is really powerful enough to hold him back and push him away you know and so Universe 7 is fully engaged with Universe 7 or oh, Universe 11 I mean and Universe 6 itself it's more engaged with Universe 7 you know so they're all going down massively all the battles all the echoes of fighting the shockwave the destruction every person that's still on the stage now or having a form of fighting or something and so what happens is as Gohan is fighting Gohan's fighting on top of it it's just incredibly different incredibly different especially with Frieza as well Frieza is powerful and they both manage to fight Topper to the point where Topper explodes into his um, what's it called God of Destruction form and then he just overwhelms both Gohan and Frieza. And more of them immediately. And this one Goku looks over and he senses everyone being pretty much pushed pushed hard. Vegeta getting pushed back to his max from um, Super Saiyan 2 Kefla. Head's still there waiting for his opportunity to attack. And as Goku stands there, uh, he looks around, sorry, Kefla's on the ground, Vegeta's fighting hit my bed. But as Goku stands there, um, Jiren appears right behind Goku. He rushes him and does the glare where he shows, throws hundreds of the punches. But Goku disappears immediately and Jiren looks around. And, uh, he's actually quite confused. He's like, where is Goku? Where's the person that he was brought here to fight? And as he looks up, he sees Goku standing on the stadiums. He just waves his hands at them. Everyone's just, just shocked that Goku is so, so fast. Jiren gets so angry at Goku that he just kind of like scorches the entire landscape. With massive energy to overpower everyone except for really powerful people and so Goku was just watching on everyone themselves uh, and this is when Goku changes his target he changes his target from Jiren he just he into Duck and um, Duck the Dodge just to realize what Toppo is doing to Gohan and Frieza without a blood without him he's saying Goku appears by Toppo and punches him so hard that he actually hits the pillar in craters um, um, Topper gets angry and Goku rushes Topper. Topper shoots m multiple with high kai um, gold destruction energy, but Goku just punches right through them. He hit the butts Topper right in the head. He kicks Topper's gut, throws Topper down. And so as Goku jumps up, he slams his fist on Topper's gut, oh, hurting him completely. Jiren sees this and he tries to rush at Goku. He throws a massive glare of hundreds of punches at Goku, but Goku is able to focus, duck them all, down dodge them all, and throw one massive punch. They actually catch Jiren on the gut. Goku, Goku appears and kicks Jiren's head straight down into the arena, cracking the entire um, thing he's standing upon. And then Goku jumps up to, well, not fall off, you know. And so everyone is just baffled, just the sheer strength, the sheer power of everyone right now is taking aback. Like Toppo, as strong as he is now, as God destruction, Goku is annihilating him. He can't do nothing. Dispo, as fast as he is, he won't be able to do nothing. But what he does do though, he takes out a, he takes out seventeen, and in the ensuing chaos, he manages to get Frieza out. So Frieza and seventeen's out. Gohan's Gohan's able to dodge him again, and power up the form. What happens is this is the top of um, the top of Dispo grabs Gohan and he tries to throw him out. Gohan wraps his energy of legs around um, Dispo shoots Dispo right in the face. Um, the key blast and then pulls them back and they both they all fall off and so what happens is all that's left is Raditz Vegeta oh sorry Raditz is out so I'm still state Raditz is out in the um, waiting area he ran out of energy all that's practically left is Vegeta Goku 
And now go on top two. Chris Kefler, the two Super Namikians hit. And Jiren. And what happens is as Go Goku stands there, he senses and he realizes that Kefla will be up soon. He goes by um, goes by and kicks her right in the head. Sends her flying again. As she gets up, she look what goes down is she gets sent flying again, punching in the face straight away, sent flying. Everyone just wants to know what's happening, like why did Goku just do that straight away? Everyone's taking it back. Goku states that everything we he goes, if we don't take the button now, that'll be more powerful. And so Goku goes to fight, top of rushes at Goku, so is Jiren. It comes like an opposite situation, even in the Super Namekians and hit all of them rush at Goku to try to take him out. Vegeta, like Vegeta looks out, looks on him, he's trying his best, but like he's just out of his game compared to this, this, this fight anyway. And so as they're all rushing at Goku, Goku's just fighting them off pretty much how Jiren does to Vegeta, um, Goku and Seventeen. And Frieza, he fights them all like they're nothing. Goku's doing the same. He's focusing, focusing. He's using this fight as a training method more than anything else. And as he's focusing, his energy's getting deeper. His mind's growing closer, closer to his goal. He wants to achieve the same powers as an angel. He wants to get as strong as an angel. That's the power that he's, he's trying to um, learn. Now, he can't go into the form, but he's trying to um, figure out what's more important. And as in going into the form, and as Goku starts to realize, it's not what more important. It's what is important. What is there to fight for? There is something to fight for. Everything, nothing. You're not just a, a one person. You're the universe itself. And as Goku begins to focus, delves deep, and his eyes close. His hair merely changes color, goes straight from where it was, um, from blue straight to black again. But it raises up with the white aura. And as Goku's fighting, Goku's fighting, Goku merely opens his eyes, and they all get hit with multiple punches. Topper gets smashed right into the ground badly. Hit gets almost combed out. Um, Kale gets destroyed. Um, what's it called? This way, he's 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 out of the he's out of the fight. And Jiren's the only one to block it and get pushed back. But his 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 um his cloth or his, his uniform gets gets torn apart. He looks right at Goku. He just can't believe this. Like what the hell? Jiren can't believe that someone so powerful like Goku exists. He gets up, he rips off his thing, he's like, Very well, if you want to show me your full power, then I'll show you mine. He explodes into his full power, uh, full power form. In doing so, he, he's relentless. He rushes to fight, not knowing that everyone's, everyone's in his way. And as both Jiren and Goku clash in their, in their, in their forms, what happens is a lot of fighters get sent to fly on top, but couldn't recover in time, and he gets sent out. Vegeta does, go undoes. Nearly all the fighters but Jiren and Goku stay in the fight because of how reckless both the two the powers are. And as Goku lands, he notices everyone's out with them. But bear in mind, everyone was exhausted fighting them. So Universe 6 is gone. Dramatically gone. All their fighters couldn't, even ha couldn't, couldn't heap up to the battle. And all this left with Universe 7 and Universe um, 11. Goku and Jiren are bouncing back and forth, but all the gods are, like, are in a state of awe. Goku's using Ultra Instinct. But to a different degree, Goku's dodging all the Jiren's punches successfully. He hitting Jiren with multiple connections. Even more powerful, Jiren glares at Goku, but Goku's managed to do the same exact thing. Goku taps Jiren's um, gut, makes Jiren hit the ground immediately. Goku back backhands him, sends him flying into the pillar. And as Goku um, walks over to Jiren, Goku looks at Jiren, and Jiren begins to get angry at Goku. And states about how he's he, he like pretty much goes into the part where he turns into his lumber breaker form. But the moment he does that, Goku, but Goku immediately flexes his energy and explodes the entire area. And so as Jiren's going on towards his level breaker form, Goku's starting to starting to understand how this power works now, 100%. And doing so, Goku immediately, ends, um, his hair goes white, his eyes go silver, and looks right at Jiren. Jiren looks right at Goku, and he's actually stunned. All the gods of the structure are looking right at Goku. Goku walks out of the energy, and this is when um, we see all of them. They're like. Congratulations to Goku. He has mastered my um, Ultra Instinct. And as Goku looks at Jiren, Goku's like, This is really something else. Jiren looks at Goku, he's like, Nothing's changed, but Goku immediately appears. And as he appears behind Jiren, Jiren gets hit with so much punches that he actually bleeds out, despite him being in his limit breaker form. And Jiren tries to swipe at Goku, Goku's already in front of him, kicking him in the face. Jiren gets up from the ground and looks up again. He tries to punch Goku, but Goku's already behind him, pins his arm down, slams his head into the ground, grabs his foot, starts smashing through multiple Kachi, Kachi and boulders. And Goku throws Jiren up, slams his foot right into the back of Jiren's head, 
drain goes rocketing down to one of the lower pillars, or lower um, floating debris that they had. Goku lands upon it, also walks over Jiren. Jiren. Jiren's like, no, he can't accept it. He started to get angry, angry until he breaks his limits again. And so Jiren starts to push his power up to even higher, higher type, higher limits than he's ever gone. Goku can feel the energy within him. Goku, Goku realizes for him to maintain this, he needs to keep the spell balance in motion. He needs to keep this well, raw power, to be honest, because that's what that's, it's in a sense raw power to Goku. Instinct, yes, but Goku's power suffers on another level. And as Goku walks at Jiren, Jiren throws a punch, Goku throws three. Hurting Jiren massively, Jiren doesn't even land a punch. Goku's toying with Jiren until the point where Jiren's, Jiren gives his last, last attack. His final attack on Goku, Goku catches the attack and completely crushes it, destroying all Jiren's hopes. All the gods are gone. All the gods' destruction, all the angels, I mean, are gone. And both Belmont, Beerus, and the two gods of creation look down and they're actually surprised. I really are. Jiren collapses and goes, that's all I've got. I just wonder, you know, he can't accept defeat, but at the same time, he can't do nothing to Goku. Goku's proven that he'll just he'll just annihilate him. And as Goku looks at Jiren, Goku powers up, and he goes, this is nothing personal, but I have a lot to live for, family, loved ones, promises. Who knows, I may even promise to help you guys out one day. So I hope you get stronger, and I'd like to see you again. Next time, Goku instantly powers up a massive attack, and and this time he shoots Jiren straight out of the tournament. Goku merely wins. And he does exactly the same as the 17 when revives everyone back. Beerus um, heals Frieza. And Frieza states that he won't change. Goku walks over to Beerus, a Frieza, and tells him, I find out that you're going back to doing what you are doing before Frieza. I'll kill you again. Frieza looks at Goku. Goku, tell Goku shows his energy, like his powers, and I met around him. Frieza's actually taken aback. And Frieza goes, well, I'm going to conquer a world to take over if that's the case. Goku goes, by all means, why don't I come near my sector? And, and, Goku, and so Frieza leaves. And they all, they all go back and massively, everyone's excited, they won. Vegeta, Raditz, Goku, all of them, all happy. Go about their lives. But Goku and Vegeta begin to fight. And this is when Raditz starts to slow down. He starts to slow down in the fighting like Nappa did. But only because he's got more important things like family and stuff like that. Goku does too, but he always trains with Vegeta. They always fight, sparring non stop, non stop. And as they're fighting non stop, okay, uh, this is a few months later, Frieza has gotten really strong. He trained non stop after the tournament power to try and bridge the gap between him and Goku. And so what also happens is Frieza found Broly early in this expansion. Frieza doesn't care about Goku, he'll do whatever he wants anyway. And so when he finds Broly, instead of taking Broly straight away, Frieza goes and trains with Broly. Now, over the period of time, Frieza and Broly have uh, fought to the point where Broly's gone berserk multiple times where Frieza had to use to go to his golden form just to handle it. But it got to the point where Broly starts to, starts to get stronger and stronger than that point. And so, um, Paragus has to always electric shock Broly to lock him in place. And it works for a bit, you know, it works for a bit. Broly, um, Broly, um, body and um, gets stronger and stronger and stronger he gains more control over his abilities he even learns more fighting skills you know learns everything he becomes low to Frieza Frieza gives him everything he even gives him the girl that saved him and so she so stays with Broly and they both train non-stop with Frieza and Broly I want to say eight months past okay by the time they come back to earth to get the Dragon Balls this is where different things are really different when Bulma finds out the Dragon Balls have gone missing Vegeta, Goku, and, and Bulma go out to find the last one. Whisa comes along, of course, and Beerus becomes the unofficial babysitter. Which annoys him, but he just had to go with it. And as Goku and them land on the ship and they find the aliens, assuming they feel Frieza's powers, Vegeta looks up and he goes, What the hell? For, for how did Frieza get so powerful? And Goku goes, It's something to do with their race, Vegeta. Frieza admits, um, comes out of the um, ship and lands. Uh, and as Freeze is walking out, well, out comes um, Paragus and Broly. Now Freeze knows for a fact Broly is stronger than Vegeta. Now he doesn't know how strong Broly is compared to Goku's. That's the thing he wants to find out now. And so as Broly looks at Goku and Vegeta, Goku goes, interesting, these two are Saiyans. And Vegeta goes, yeah. And this is when the situation of Vegeta finding out about King Vegeta, blah, blah, blah. 
But then Vegeta goes, I'm not my father. And why would that tyrant anyway? He destroyed our race. He's the reason why the situation happened in the first place. If it wasn't for him, the legend of the Super Saiyan wouldn't be so feared. And Paragus goes, no, no. He lived in this hate for so long that he's not going to give in. And he tells, he tells per, um, Broly to rush Vegeta. As Broly rushes Vegeta, he ignites his power and when Vegeta senses this, without hesitation, goes exactly and explodes into blue. And him and Broly begin to fight. Now bear in mind this Broly is way stronger than he is in canon. And as both Broly and Vegeta are fighting, it's made very clear that Broly is much stronger than Vegeta. And starting to get even more and more. And so Vegeta has to forcefully explode himself into Super Saiyan Blue Evolution. And that's when he starts to dominate Broly. But then Broly catches Vegeta's punch, he starts to power up and normally goes on towards the carry state. And he destroys Vegeta. Smashing him to the ground and stumps on him. And as Broly is about to end, Vegeta Goku catches Broly's hands. Stops the attack, kicks Broly back of his legs and throws him off. Broly hits, his gr hits, the, hits the ground behind him. He looks at Goku and Goku's looking right at Vegeta. Goku goes over and hands Vegeta a sensor bean towards Vegeta eats it and he instantly gets up with it. And he looks at himself and goes, let me fight him Kakarot again. Goku goes, no. I feel not having relics Vegeta. He's as strong as you are now. Vegeta looks over at Broly and he's, he's actually scared. Blows him, blows him away to be honest, That's, he got so strong. Goku walks over and goes, I'll fight him. Goku goes 100% base form. And him and Broly rush in, they begin the battle. And it's made very clear that Goku and Broly is just getting stronger and stronger, and Broly is just increasing his power in the Sakari state. And so as, Go as Goku and Broly are fighting, it's made very clear that Broly, Broly can't overpower Goku, even in his base form. And so Goku starts to talk to, Bro to Broly. He goes, why are you doing this? You know you don't need to fight for no one else but yourself, right? Broly looks at Goku and Goku goes, yeah, you don't need to hang out with them, they're evil. Can't you see that in your father? You were freezer, he killed our people. He killed my mom and dad. And Broly looks at Goku and Goku goes, yeah, well, the you know, way I had a good life, you know, living on Earth, and if you want, I can train you. I'm even stronger, much more, much more to, uh, tuned with your power, you know? Up to you. Broly's just trying to fight Goku head him, but Goku's just way too much for me. And then Broly um, starts to power up even more and throws a punch at Goku. Goku catches the punch, puts his elbow right in Broly's gut. In doing so, Broly coughs up, and he, he falls over, and Goku puts one hand up, and pushes Broly back he tells him you don't need to fight for them and if you do want to continue I will still help you but even with the power you have right now you have nowhere beating me when Vegeta hears that he's like looking at Goku Broly gets angry and powers up to full power and rushes at Goku Goku just closes his eyes he focuses and as Broly first goes to hit him Goku dodges the attack immediately jumps and headbutts Broly around the head and then Goku flips backwards <coughs> Broly gets up off the ground and he's like, what the? And he rushes at Goku, he get, gets even more and more angrier. And Goku smiles, he goes, Could you, can you go Super Saiyan? Goku merely appears, kicks Broly in the gut, kicks Broly in the air and slams Broly down. And that's when Frieza realizes that Broly can't go Super Saiyan. And so without hesitation, Frieza kills King Cold and make it act like it's fake. Towards um, Broly believes that, you know. He turns to Super Saiyan and rushes at Goku. Now, as powerful as Broly is, this Goku is so much more stronger. I'm just going to explain to you. This is GT Goku. After 20 extra years of training, and then he comes back in time to train another good 20 years again. So this Goku is so much more stronger than the Super Goku. And the experience and all that, way more powerful, okay? And so Goku um, proceeds to actually decimate Broly. But then Broly goes Super Saiyan. After seeing Paragus, he rushes Goku. And as they, they have an intense close battle, but Goku sees that Broly is technically not a match for him. And Goku doesn't go into his god form, so he just explodes into a Super Saiyan form. And doing so, Frieza rushes Goku too. Frieza, and, and both Broly and Frieza begin to fight Goku. Frieza's in, um, Broly's in Super Saiyan fighting Goku, and he's really powerful. And Frieza's gone into his golden form, so he's really strong. And as Frieza and Broly are fighting Goku, Goku's actually quite impressed. They got the strong and knowing that. Frieza actually learned how to synchronize the Saiyan. Both Paragus, uh, sorry, both Broly and Frieza throw a punch. They actually catch Goku down. He punches Goku back. Goku instantly stops himself. And he goes, Super Saiyan's not going to handle it right. All right then. Goku explodes, goes to the Super Saiyan God. Catches both their hands. And instantly connects them, smacking them both together. Goku flips them, grabs Phoenix, uh, um, 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 Beerus' feet. Beerus, my bad. Frieza and Broly's feet fly straight up in the air. And Goku instantly speed blitzes both of them, slamming them to the ground. 
and he grabs them both and spins them around, throws them both into the same area. And both Vlad and Goku opens his hands and chucks a massive key ball at both of them. As it hits them, it does a massive explosion. Broly, Broly tanks to the tap of Frieza, he, 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 he just, he gets up, he's irritated. And as he looks up, he realizes that he's actually more hurt than he, he, he can see. Broly walks over. Broly's power is starting to flood now, his, his energy is starting to get bigger and bigger. And this is what Goku wanted, a fight, a fight with actually Broly. And so as, Go, as Broly screws off, he rushes at Goku. He begins to fight Goku, Goku sees that Broly is utilizing some of his, um, what's it called, some of his, um, Akari state, or Super Saiyan 4 state. And Goku realizes that Broly has a natural connection to it without going Super Saiyan 4. So practically when Broly went Super Saiyan, he practically went Super Saiyan 4 in a sense. And this surprises Goku, because Broly is so powerful. And so, Goku just, just toys with Broly, pulls out his full strength. Until the point where Goku goes Super Saiyan Blue. And then Goku headbutts Broly, because they actually start beating him down. Forcing Broly to get stronger, stronger and stronger and stronger. Goku forces Broly to even uh, um, raise his key as much as he can. To the point where his hair is strong, massive um, green. His neck, his neck um, thing breaks away. And Broly's gone to his strongest form. Goku sees this, he lands on the ground, speed blisters Broly. Goku's hair goes a little bit darker, and he explodes as a Super Saiyan Blue Evolution, because Go Goku's a um, genius, okay? He'll, he'll learn for Jesus' techniques. He rushes at Broly, he goes up to him, he headbutts Broly really hard, and Broly's like, they dazed, and Goku punches Broly right in the gut, a good three or four times. Goku kicks Broly up in the air, jumps in the air, and slams Broly down with his foot. And as Broly gets up, Goku does one more hand um, um, key blast from his hands, chucks it right at Broly's face. The attack explodes through a massive crater. Broly's, Broly's knocked down on the ground. Goku smiles. And then he sets his freezer. Goku instant transmission by freezer, kicking freezer in the gut, grabbing his tail, and, and speed blitzing him, slamming him to the ground. Then Goku kicks freezer in the head, cracking the ground. Freezer falls back into his, his final form, or his base final form. Picks up freezer. And Goku tells Frieza, what did I tell you about coming to Earth? And Frieza states that he just wanted to see how strong he and his Saiyan has gotten compared to Goku. And Frieza knows that Goku's holding so much power back, it's actually ridiculous. It scares Frieza to know that Goku has all of this power. Goku at first sees Frieza and he's angry, but he lets Frieza go. He tells Frieza to take Broly. And he, he was not going to tell Frieza to take Broly, but the Goku goes, no. You want to leave here without the sands. Goku looks over and sees the Paracus is dead. And Goku goes, did you do that? And Frieza smiles. And he goes, um, you're so simple. Goku uses his, his telekinetic abilities to take the Dragon Balls that Frieza has. And he tells Frieza, you're not making a wish. The wish is to revive um, Broly's dad. To make up for Vegeta's father's mistakes. And Broly looks at Vegeta. <clears throat> and so what happens is, Frieza goes, fine. He disappears immediately. And so with Frieza leaving and being uh, leaving Earth and with his tail tucked behind his, between his legs, what happens is um, Shenron is summoned. And with Shenron being summoned, um, Goku uses the wish to fix up the damage that was caused by this incurring battle over the entire area. And not only that, he wishes for Paragus to be revived. Paragus is revived immediately and he enters his body. Vegeta stands over him, Paragus is scared. He looks at Broly, Broly's being recovered by Goku. Goku's talking to him. Paracus goes, what happened? All I remember was Frieza putting a death beam at me and, and Vegeta goes, not to worry. Kakarot dealt with him. Is Frieza dead? He goes, no. Kakarot's still an idiot, but Frieza's still out there. He don't, wouldn't want to come back to Earth, not again. And your son has got a new, has got a new master. And Paracus looks at Goku. He sees Goku talking to Broly properly, you know, t teaching him, training him, like talking into his mind, helping him. And Paracus is like looking down as a failed father. And this is when it comes to the story of Nappa. Now, Nappa is an old Saiyan general, so he'll definitely know who Paracus is. They were old friends. Nappa's stronger than Paracus. Well, he's dramatically stronger than Paracus now, but in canon, he was stronger than Paracus um, even still. And so, as, as um, Nappa sees Paragus, he tells him everything about Earth and what he can achieve, blah blah blah. And Paragus actually th lives there, he figures out his life down there. Broly, however, he he, he stays with um, Chilai. They stay on Earth, but Broly wants to learn everything from Goku, his new teacher, 
person that helped can teach him how to control his emotions. Because when Broly loses, his emotions govern him. But now, now having Goku, Goku allowed Broly to one control all his um, inner fears, all his inner pain, and focus it, focus it on something more positive or unique or strongly, to the actual strength. And so Broly begins to get stronger and stronger, with more focus, more sensory training. He becomes more better at everything he does. And only that, he finally has a stable home because Paragus, even though he wants to be by his son at not the right time, like he should have listened and not helped Frieza. Frieza's a tyrant. He's accepted Vegeta's apology. And him and Nappa, well, he goes back to live at Nappa's house because Nappa's got his own place, you know. And so Paragus, for the most part, adapts to living life on Earth, even with other Saiyans. And what happens is um, Nappa goes, it's, it's their responsibility for Paragus and Nappa to teach the next generation of half breed Saiyans. The history of the Saiyans. Paragus looks at Nappa and he sees that Nappa actually takes this role very seriously. He goes, Yes, uh, he goes, um, we have new family down here now. New life, Kakarot gave us a new life. I actually have a family. I actually have I'm a powerful child. Vegeta has powerful children. Kakarot has powerful children. Raditz has a powerful child. Imagine what your son can have. The Saiyan race can, um, um, can flourish again on Earth. And so well, they all talk, and go, um, Paragus accepts living on Earth. He lives with um, lives with um, Nappa and them. And what happens is Frieza goes out looking for help to try to find a way to kill Goku. And he comes across someone. He actually finds the someone. And so as Frieza talks to him, this person with the mask states that he has a plan. What he needs to do is get, he needs to get a friend out of jail. Whilst their friend comes out of jail, he could possibly help us with the endeavor of killing the sand. And as Frieza smiles and smokes on his face, knowing that Goku's death is soon at hand. This is where I'm going to leave this one of guys. I hope you guys like this. Please like and subscribe. Leave your comments down below. And yeah, take care of yourselves in this weird climate. And I hope you guys all have, um, have a good day, okay guys? But as usual guys, this is Dr. Kahu saying peace.